Now, as you watch the video, let's um, keep in mind a couple of things. Number one, um, this, as I said, is going to illustrate, uh, go to be a step in the illustration of constructivist position on how one aspect, of, at least one aspect of language develops, and that is language content. Now, what did we say about what language content is about and really what language is about? When we speak, what do we speak about? Do we speak about the objects that exist in the real world? No. We said that language is a code whereby ideas about the world are represented. So when we speak, when a child speaks, a child may look like he is or she is speaking about the chair or the floor in the real world, but really it's about how the child is thinking about those objects that the child perceives. Or if the object is not present, that it's, it's clearly what the child is thinking about at the moment. Language is about content of mind. What the chi child thinks about at any particular moment in its, his or her mind. That's what we're talking about. Then, therefore, the question comes up, how does the world get from out there into our mind? That's the question. How does, how does that happen? I think constructivist theory gets at that to some extent. Now let's think a little further about this business of content of mind and what we've learned so far. Content of mind. We are using, remember we're using the Bloom and Leahy framework for thinking about content of mind. So what does the nature, the nature of language content, according to Leahy, and the position we're taking as we uh, look at our language samples and analyze ch children's language and try to conceptualize the child's language. What do we say about content? There are three, several, two major components to content, is, isn't there? If you remember Leahy chapter one, that chart, there's object knowledge, which is the information we have in our mind, how we're thinking about the everyday objects that we experience, the chair, the table, the floor, how we think about those things, that that, that object is a chair or a table. Whatever our cultural and personal experiences are, we have knowledge of those objects. But remember, <clears throat> how did we how are we analyzing language content? Not against object knowledge, but, a, but against with reference to knowledge categories. Existence, action, locative action, categories of ideas. And we're saying that sentences, by the way, that language, we, we're talking about these ideas as reflexive object relations, object relations, event relations. Relations. They are verb relations. Relations. Relations between subjects and objects through actions. So... Take, for example, the sentence, um, the cat ate the mouse. That's Remember, we, we focused in on things like that. We recognize that's a relation. The ideas in that sentence are a relationship. That sentence codes a relationship between the cat and the mouse through the act of eating. The cat ate the mouse. Or part-whole relations. The mouse is gray. That's the mouse and its part, gray, an attribute of the mouse. Part-whole relation, that's a relation. Or a state, the mouse is hungry. Relationship between the, the mouse and its state of being, hunger, through being. The mouse, be hungry, is hungry. Are you following me? Language content is about relationships. We are, then we spoke about event relations in the most, more complex sentences. These are more complex verb relations. Level four relations, such as temporal relations. The cat chased the mouse and then the cat ate the mouse. Or um, causal relations. The cat ate the mouse because he's a cat. Or, and um, epistemic relations, communication relations, notice relations, etc. 
those are more complex event relations. But relations, relations, relations. That's what language content is about, content of mind is about, making relationships. So we have to ask ourselves, what explains, what can explain to us how a child learns to make these mental relationships that allow for the ideation underlying language, the semantic relations. The, the key term here is relations. Well, if we look at a child playing spontaneously or acting spontaneously, if you watch your kids play, and if you watch the videotape coming up, you will see this child spontaneously and naturally makes relationships. That's what children's play is often about. It's about physically, physically making relationships among objects and actions. Kids put things in, they take things out, they, uh, they, uh, you'll see the child in the next tape coming up, they put together things like beads and take them apart. They make, in their play, they make relationships. So we then see, well look, we look at children play, children's play and that spontaneous behavior and notice relationship making. Well, make, constructivists make a connection between physical relationship making through physical manipulation of objects and mental me relationship making that underlies the semantic relations, the content categories, the object relations, the event relations that children talk about, you see. So, I'd like you to look at the videotape, at the link that I present to you, at the videotape that that link uh, activates, and think about the following. Think about the following. One, <clears throat> what kinds of relationships is the child making in the child's play? Does this child set a goal for himself? If one or more goals, if so, what's the goal the child sets for him or herself? Himself, sorry, it's a boy. Himself. Does the child run into any problems? What are the problems the child runs into? Does the child spontaneously make efforts to resolve or solve his problems? Um... Those are the questions I want you to ask, and uh, then I'm going to come back and um, say that this business of setting goals for oneself, um, making an effort to achieve the goals, running into problems, recognizing problems, working to solve problems, and using information from that entire experience underlies the development of content of mind and particularly the relationship making that is intrinsic to um, language content. Um, there's, a, again, a strong connection we see between the physical actions and the mental actions. And we find in the physical behavior of children the raw potential raw material for developing the mental conscious ideas about the uh, events that children ultimately play at. So take a look at the video and then we'll come back.